an elementary idea that gets you a long way in counting things is this idea of counting with bijections, which is counting one thing by counting another. And we can illustrate that by example. Let's begin with looking at some stuff that is easy to count using just the simple sum and product rules. Um, so suppose that I'm trying to count passwords. This is a contrived, oversimplified example, but it gives you the idea. And this is what I mean by a password. A password is a sequence of characters that are either letter, letters or digits, uh, subject to the constraints that they are supposed to be between six and eight characters long. They're supposed to start with a letter, and they're case sensitive, so you can tell the difference between uppercase and lowercase letters. So let's define the set L of all the letters, uppercase and lowercase together. And let D be the set of digits uh, from 0 through 9. Then we said that passwords are supposed to be between 6 and 8 words long, but it's a little bit easier actually to just use length as a parameter. So let's think about words of length n that satisfy the password conditions. So pn is going to be the length n words starting with a letter. Um, and so, uh, which is one of the password constraints. So we can express that as a length n word can be broken up into the first character, which is an L, paired with the rest of the word, the remaining n minus 1 characters. And the remaining n minus 1 characters can be either L's or D's. So the length n passwords uh, can be expressed as the product of L with the nth power of L union D. That is L union D cross L union D cross L union D n minus 1 times. Well, now we have an easy way to count this because the size of uh, this product by the product rule is the size of L times the size of L union D to the n minus first power. Um, and of course, L union D, since letters and digits don't overlap, by the sum rule, the size of them is just L plus D. And so I get this nice formula that um, uh, it's 52 letters uh, times 52 letters plus 10 digits raised to the n minus first power. OK. What about the passwords? Well, the passwords were then P6 union P7 union P8. And since words of length 6 don't overlap with words of length 7 or 8. This is a disjoint union, and therefore the total number of passwords as specified is simply the size of P6 plus the size of P7 plus the size of P8. There's the formula when I plug in, and it turns out to be a good size number, 19 times 10 to the 14th. OK, that's one simple example where I'm translating a spec into something that I can express easily as a uh, uh, as a products and sums and disjoint sums of stuff that I already know the size of. Let's just do another example. Um, suppose that I want to count the number of four-digit numbers. So the, the elements of these four-digit numbers are 0 through 9. Uh, there are 10 possibilities um, with at least one 7. The number of four-digit sequences of digits uh, that have at least one 7 in them. And one way to count is I can make it a sum of different four-digit numbers containing one seven, depending on where the first seven is. If there's at least one seven, there's a first seven. That's the well-ordering principle being applied. So if we let x abbreviate any digit, there are 10 possible values of x, and o represent any digit other than seven, so there's nine possible values of o, then the words that start with seven can then be followed with uh, any, any three digits. So 7xxx is one possible pattern when the first occurrence of 7 is first. Another possible pattern is when you have a digit that's not 7 followed by a 7. This is when 7 occurs second followed by anything at all. Likewise, here uh, 7 occurs third and here 7 occurs fourth. Now these uh, individual patterns are easy enough to count using the product rule because uh, here, I have to count how many triples of any digits are there. Well, there's 10 digits, so it's 10 cubed. Here, how many um, uh, sequences of where the first choice is 9 and the second two choices are 10, and it's 9 times 10 squared. Here, it's 9 squared times 10, and here, it's 9 cubed. These are disjoint because um, they're distinguished by where the first 7 occurs. Uh, and so I just add them up, and I get this number. Not especially interesting, but it's 3439. 
Okay, so that's an exercise in counting something by somewhat ingeniously breaking it up into a sum of disjoint things that are themselves uh, easy to, easier to count. Um, there's another way that's another standard trick that comes up in combinatorics of how do you count the number, the, the sequence of four digit numbers with at, with at least one seven by counting their complement. Count the numbers of, of four digit numbers that don't have any sevens and simply subtract that number, the number of four digit numbers with no sevens from the total number of four digit numbers and that's going to be the numbers that are left over that have one seven. Now the number of four digit numbers is easy to count and it will turn out that the number of four digit numbers with no sevens is also really easy to count because the number of four digit numbers is 10 to the fourth and the number of four digit numbers with no sevens there's nine possible choices for each of the remaining digits so it's just the digits 0 through 9, leaving out 7 to the 4th power, or 9 to the 4th. And you can double check that 10 to the 4th minus 9 to the 4th is 34, 39. So now, with that practice using the basic sum and product rules, we can start uh, applying and thinking about the bijection rule. So the bijection rule simply says that if I have a bijection between two sets A and B, then they have the same size, at least uh, assuming that they're finite sets and the only kind of things we're counting are finite sets. Uh, let's use an example of that where I'm going to count the number of subsets of a set A by finding a bijection between the subsets of a set A and something that I do know how to count. In fact, we've already counted them, the binary strings of a given length. What's the bijection? Well, suppose that A is a set of n elements, call them A1 through An, um, and I have some arbitrary subset of, of A. Say it's got A1 and it doesn't have A2 and it has A3 and it has A4 and it doesn't have A5 and then it's got some selection of the other numbers and it turns out it has A in it, okay? Well, if I think of a subset laid out this way up against the, co the corresponding elements in A, I can code this in an obvious way by putting a 1 where the element is in the subset and a 0 where the element is not in the subset. In effect, this is the so-called characteristic function of the subset where 1 means that that index element, a 1 in the ith position means that ai is there and a 0 in the ith position means that ai is not there. So the second uh, coordinate here uh, is a 0, that means a2 is not there. And this is uh, easily seen to be a bijection. That is, given the string, you can figure out what the subset is. Given the subset, you can figure out what the unique string is. So we have a bijection. And what we conclude then is that the number of n-bit strings is equal to the size of power set of A. It's equal to the number of subsets of A. And of course, we know how to count the number of n-bit strings. It's 2 to the n. So what we just figured out is if I have a set of size n, it's got 2 to the n subsets. And a slick way to say that without mentioning n is that the size of the power set of A is simply 2 to the size of A. One more example of bijection counting um, that uh, is kind of fun and, uh, and interesting and will illustrate the fact that we learn something by finding a bijection even if we don't know how to count either one yet. So what I'm interested in is, suppose I have a situation where there are five kinds of donuts, five different flavors of donuts, and I want to sort of select a dozen, and I want to know how many selections there are. So for example, uh, these little O's represent donuts. Uh, I might choose a selection of a dozen by choosing two chocolate and no lemon, I don't like those so much, and six sugars, and two glazed, and two plain. So there are uh, 12 donuts here uh, using uh, four out of the five possible flavors of donuts. This is what I'll call a selection of a donut, and I'd like to know how many such selections of donuts are there. Well, uh, let that be the set A, the set of all these different ways of selecting 12 donuts uh, when there are five flavors of donuts available. Well, there's an, again an obvious correspondence between the set A of donut selections and the set B of zeros and ones of length 16 that contain four ones. What's the correspondence? Well, here's my donut selection. Of course, the reason why I use those 
O's for donuts is that they also correspond to zeros, um, I can just put in ones as delimiters between the groups of flavors. So after the the chocolate donuts, I put a one, and then after the lemon donuts, there happen to be none, I put another one, and then after the six sugar donuts, I put a one, uh, and and then I kind of consolidate and I extract from the donut selection this 16-bit word with uh, 12 zeros corresponding to 12 donuts and four ones corresponding to breaking up those groups of zeros into five categories, five slots, uh, corresponding to the number of donuts of each flavor. So the general bijection, of course, is that if I have a selection of C, chocolate donuts, L, lemon donuts, S, sugar donuts, G, glazed, and P, plain, uh, of any number, really, the, uh, that a selection of donuts with this number of chocolates, lemons, glazed, plain, corresponds to a binary word um, with C plus L plus S plus G plus P zeros and four ones. And so what we can say is that the set of 16 digit words with four ones is exactly the same size as the number of donut selections, even though at this moment, we don't know how to count either one. We will see in the, lect the next lecture an easy way to count the number of those uh, 16 bit words with four ones. But for now, our conclusion from bijection counting is that these two sets are the same size, even though I haven't counted yet either one.